It's time for the latest from Germany's domestic football league, the Bundesliga, and more specifically, the German national team this week. And for that, we are joined by Chris Harrington from our partner station, Deutsche Welle in Berlin. Chris, Bayern Munich's Manuel Neuer reached a new milestone in his international career this past weekend. Uh, what milestone did he reach and where would you rank him among the greats? Well, uh, he has tied uh, the all-time record for the most caps for a goalkeeper in Germany. He uh, right now uh, 95, and uh, I think against Spain, he'll become the all-time leader. Now, uh, he started his career in 2009. He's gone on to win a World Cup. You know, uh, I, I do think he is number one in, in terms of Germany. You know, Oliver Kahn is a name you always hear, you know, but when you talk about longevity, you talk about how much more Noya has left in the tank. I think he will pass 100 cap, you know, um, and, and, and that's obviously will be among the top 10, you know, in, in German uh, uh, international history. Uh, national history, rather. You know, so I, I think he's the greatest goalkeeper. I mean, we, he's coming off a treble. You know, uh, Bayern Munich could potentially win another treble. You know, um, and uh, the biggest shock is that he just uh, tied a 40-year-old record that was held by Seth Meyer. You know, so that just says that, obviously, you know, it, it's uh, the changing of the guard, and so to speak, in the face of uh, the German between the posts, and that's Manuel Neuer. I, I think... Uh, you'd be a fool to uh, dispute the case that uh, Neuer is the best that, that uh, Germany has ever had between the posts. And arguably that the world has ever seen, especially revolutionizing the sweeper-keeper role that we've seen. Uh, what did you see from Germany um, over, the, over the past weekend? Uh, did they look better ahead of their match against Spain? Well, yeah, conceding an early uh, sloppy goal, you know, uh, w w wasn't nice to see when you consider the fact that Ukraine had a handful of players out because of COVID-19. You know, uh, Germany's defense has been shaky, so that wasn't a big shock. You know, I, I did like the way uh, Germany re responded offensively through Leroy Sané and Timo Vanna. You know, but the reality is Germany have a long way to go. Uh, not in terms of the Nations League, though. They are winning, leading their group by one point. They only need to draw against Spain. And Spain, you know, hasn't looked the best. You know, their last outing didn't look so good. They did equalize, but, you know, that was a red card Switzerland had to deal with. So uh, I, I think Germany have the momentum moving forward. You know, but Germany have a bigger uh, ball come June. You know, the, their European championship group, you know, uh, look very dangerous for them. You know, France, uh, Portugal, Hungary. You know, I, I think Joachim Love in Germany will have their hands uh, full despite – you know, these fireworks, uh, they get uh, let off by doing well in the Nations League. I mean, come on, it's the Nations League. It's a bigger tournament, you know, for the teams trying to make their way into major tournaments and not like a German side. Definitely. And that is a group of death, so to speak, coming up for them at the Euros. Um, what has Germany coach Joachim Lowe said about the injury to uh, Josia, uh, sorry, uh, Joshua Kimmich and uh, a potential return for Thomas Müller and company? Well, in terms of the uh, injury, you know, he said injuries like this were bound to happen. You know, when you consider how much football, you know, is being played right now, you know, it was a matter of time. You know, it's tough to see just a, such a key component in Joshua Kimmich get injured. But since his surgery, you know, maybe he is back in, uh, in full swing, you know, uh, come June. Now, it, the other news really shocked me. It's this idea that uh, Joachim Love is considering – maybe recalling uh, Thomas Müller, Mats Hummels, and Jerome Boateng. You know, he basically said he'll have to reassess the issue, you know, uh, come the next big tournament. Because Germany don't want to be a disaster like they were in Russia. And when you factor in there might be more injuries coming, who knows what will happen with how much football teams, you know, are playing and the individuals are playing right now. And I think it's a positive that Joachim Love is considering, you know, to go back on what he is made very clear for quite some time now. You know, uh, I think Thomas Müller, you know, might make the most sense considering, you know, how uh, valuable he's been on creating goals. But then when you look at their defense, I don't think it will be a bad idea to, you know, uh, welcome back Boateng and Hummels and uh, join him once again with Manuel Neuer because that was the trio that led to their World Cup victory. You know, so we have to wait and see. Uh, all in all, Germany, I don't, uh, you know, I think we have to slow down by uh, thinking that they could really shock and awe uh, come this European championship. You know, I think that they're in a rebuilding phase while other teams, you know, seem to be going full stride, specifically France. 
Now, Chris, you mentioned Jerome Boateng. His days look to be numbered at Bayern. Uh, what will be next for the aging defender in your estimation? Well, I think the Premier League will be a nice destination for him. It's an opportunity for him to redeem himself because his stint in Man City was uh, nothing to celebrate. But it did lead to the opportunity at Bayern Munich. Two trebles later, you know, he's 32 years old. He was getting a lot of slack saying he's out of form. He gets injured too much and all this and that. But at 32, he's, he has resurrected his career under Hansi Flick. You know, maybe it's the fact that he's not playing international football right now. But nonetheless, you cannot... Uh, dispute the fact that he is playing with, you know, something to prove, you could argue. And then you have to look at the young talent that Bayern Munich right now have. I mean, their investments, obviously, they're not going to re-sign Jerome Boateng. They'll allow him to leave, you know, uh, free uh, at the end of his contract because Lucas Hernandez, Ben Pavad, Nicolas Zula, all of these players are uh, basically being uh, groomed to become the next guard of defense at Bayern Munich. So I think the Premier League, there have been uh, mentions with Man United, Tottenham, and uh, Chelsea. You know, I think when you look at uh, his experience, his physicality, what he brings to the pitch, the Premier League could be a right fit and a nice ending to his career because that's the one place, obviously, he wants to improve and uh, kind of rewrite uh, the history. Yeah, a lot of teams in the in the Premier League will be looking to shore up their defense uh, for, uh, for certain, uh, especially with how competitive it's been this year. Now, before we let you go, Chris, what else has hit your radar coming I out of not Germany? have you. Well, some news surrounding Jaden Sancho. You know, uh, he's finally addressed uh, his lack of form right now, and he's saying that it has nothing to do with the summer of speculation linking him to a move to Manchester United. You know, I beg to differ. I, I think that has a lot to do with it. You know, right now, because his name and it not going through, I'm sure that's weighing on his, you know, obviously, you know, his mind for quite some time. But the positive thing is he's recently scored a goal for England. You know, he hadn't scored a goal in 14 months. So maybe that is a sign that he is changing, turning things around. I think, though, Dortmund have such young talent emerging right now, the likes of Gio Reyna. He's just longer deal with Dortmund you know you have uh, Mukoku is he'll be 16 ahead of their fixture with Hertha Berlin a lot of young players looking to make a case and it could be good news for Jaden Sancho because Ed Woodward you know uh, the big wig at Man United said maybe they can you know get rid of some pieces and come up with the capital in time for Sancho for the winter transfer window so we have to see if that works out because then It'll all make sense and it will all be full circle. And then maybe the world will start seeing the Jaden Sancho of old. But as it is right now, he's in the black and yellow. So he has to, you know, compete and kind of build his form up. But positive for teams interested, specifically Man United. He is scoring goals, at least for England right now. That is a positive sign. He is obviously a generational talent and we hope to see him in his best form again. But thank you for the Bundesliga and Germany update. Chris Harrington from our partner station Deutsche Welle in Berlin, Germany. Have a fantastic day. Cheers. Thanks as well.